nothing that quite takes the place of coming home, especially after you've been away a while. Once you wrestle your bags from the airlines and hit the street, there's really nothing between you and that dream you've been whittling on for all these years, except optimism, hard work, lots of belief in what you're up to, <laughs> and more hard work. That's how it is when you're music ambassadors who travel the world spreading good tunes and good cheer. Old time style. Dom, Rhiannon, and Justin, a new force in old time carrying on the rich tradition of Piedmont banjo and fiddle music like nobody else. not only abound with good tunes and good times, but the three young black performers also bust a few lingering stereotypes along the way. This music, they say, is universal. And who's to argue with that? Don't get trouble in your mind. Once people sit down and listen, you know, people really enjoy the music. Don't get trouble in your mind. It's really, you know, exuberant music, and it's good celebration music. I wish to It's everybody's music, really, and that's that's the story that it tells. That also gets into broken hearts and all that. of the blues to just plain fun. The chocolate drops use all kinds of traditional old-time instruments. Front and center, nearly always in the Piedmont brand of old time, is the banjo, which originally hailed from Africa. You ask a black person about the banjo, like, we don't play the banjo. It is so pervasive, the image. When they hear a banjo, they think Embraer Hillbilly in a mountain somewhere. And that has become such a popular image that it, it's taken a long time. It's now starting to change. look at the banjo, the first hundred years of its existence, it was only known as a black instrument. White people never played it. They never picked it up. They wouldn't have thought of picking it up. It's really, truly American. It was a product of, eventually, of a relationship between blacks and whites. One critical relationship in the development of the chocolate drops was Joe Thompson from Medan, a well-known black old-time musician and their mentor whom the Drops visited regularly for guidance and inspiration, long before they even were the Drops. Joe, as a young boy, saw his dad and his uncle playing at the square dances. He wanted to play the fiddle, and his mama always would say, you know, don't touch your daddy's fiddle, you're gonna break it, you're gonna break his fiddle. When Joe finally got a fiddle of his own, he only had two strings. His brother's like, you know, Daddy ain't gonna get you no strings. <laughs> he always says it like, like that. that. Just like that. He ain't gonna yeah. get you no strings. <laughs> so Joe used his imagination and a couple of odd strings from the family screen door. And finally he was on his way. Today he's a living connection to a past that has pushed the chocolate drops and their old time music well into the future. 
We want to take what we can playing with Joe and the energy and the, the feel of it. and We just kind of absorb as much as we can and then we're going to be our own people. Some people see them as preservationists of a musical style that had all but died out 50 years ago. Just preservationists only in the sense that the music that we happen to play um, is being seen by a wider audience than it has been in a long time. There's no doubt about that. Since 2005, the Chocolate Drops have traveled from coast to coast and on to Europe, where their music seems to have been appreciated differently from country to country. The French audience is slightly different from the English audience, which is slightly different from the Irish audience, and it's just it's been really fascinating. We've heard audiences all over now sing Hi, Look for the Day, you know, and <laughs> they sing them in different accents, but they do it. We play a crowd in the States, and we ask, do you want a fast one or a slow one? We're usually going to get fast every single time. Ireland, we got slow every single time. However you slice it, their music works, and that's what keeps them on the road so much. Now we've been playing out more, and we only play home a few times a year. The excitement of touring wears off about the second day, you know, in terms of traveling. People think it's glamorous, you know, until they do it. It's always nice to play home. All right now. Backstage. The real homecoming for us is the, is the Shakori Hills Festival. That was really one of the places that we got started. Hello, folks. Good to see you again. I haven't seen you all in such a long time. It's so good to be back. It's long, long overdue. We've had very lucky timing because um, there's been a resurgence of interest in old time music just in general. Since we started off never thinking about let's go conquer the world, like let's let's go play big halls and stuff. We started out going down to see Joe, and so everything else has been a cherry on top. Let's hear you sing it one more time. This is going on time with mountain. I hope it like it. Show me the pretty girls you can kind of. I hope it like it. Sing it with the road on time with mountain. I hope. So many pretty girls you can kind of. I hope it like it. We just play our set, and we're like, that was a solid set. We had a great time. It looks like the audience had a good time. And then when they go crazy, I just, what do you do? We just kind of throw up our hands and go, thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks again. We're just very, very blessed and happy to yeah. be doing it. <laughs>